We're live, Abram. We're live. It's true. I love it. It's it's true. How are you? I'm doing very well. How about you, Clave? Well, I'm doing great. I'm going to talk about nerdy news. What what could be better? I know. I'm ready. I, I missed last week's punch list, so I am ready to get back in it and swing. Well, I was I was going to scold you for that, but Lee did a good job filling in. So yeah. I met with him for about five hours to give him some good pointers and tips now that I'm a professional punch lister. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. So folks are watching us. They don't know what the punch list is. Every week on nerdsonearth.com, we run down the seven pieces of news that nerds love. So it might be Star Wars, it might be Paizo's Pathfinder. It might be, um, what might it be, Abram? It could be comics. It could be, the, it the could news be that nerds movies, love. TV. In my heart, it's always the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the only news that matters in the entire world to me. Um, but that so we run down Joe's. seven pieces of, of news on nerdsonearth.com, but that's punchy. And it's just a quick read so that nerds can catch up. But we're nerds. We can't not talk. So we also go live to talk about the news. Yeah, and it's it's anything that happened in the past week. So, you know, it's not – most of this is not groundbreaking. You might have heard it a week ago, but maybe you didn't talk about it a week ago. That's we right. here That's to talk right. about it with you. Well, and to continue the fine tradition of videos everywhere, what we just did is we talked about stuff for like 30 minutes, and then I'm going to say, and let's jump right in, <laughs> which is – they all say that, and it's ridiculous every time. But, yes. So we're just going to get into it. We're not. We're, we're not about that banter up top. I think we've only been doing it for about two minutes so far. So we're still, we're still under the the uh, average. Oh yeah. Let's talk for twenty more minutes and then let's jump right in. And number seven <laughs> on the punch list: Star Wars. Starting off strong, man. Yes. This, this is good, Abram. So the first book in a new Thrawn trilogy is releasing early it's so, early thoughts Every, everything's getting delayed and this is coming early yeah like christmas crazy. christmas coming down. early yeah um i mean i i don't read i mean there's so much star wars backlog <laughs> like there i mean you everywhere you, you go there's a whole aisle in the in your bookstore that's just all star wars <laughs> literature so i mean yep. I, I haven't i haven't honestly read a lot of it and I may not read this one for a while, but Thrawn is, I mean, he's just a, a guy that people want. <laughs> people want yeah, to read yeah. about Thrawn. Well, as a, as a good millennial, you could say, okay, boomer, but I'm actually a Gen Xer, <laughs> which is the generation that started fandom. We just quietly started fandom by, you know, being 10 years old and seeing Star Wars in the theaters. So I, w I read all the old Star Wars books. They're now called Legends. All those books were wiped out. I love the original Thrawn trilogy. Um, by the time all these new books come around, I'm like, ah, I kind of have to talk to my kids. So don't really have time for all that. So I haven't really kept up, but I love the character Thrawn. And so I'm stoked that here's a new trilogy for a whole new generation. And this is called The Ascendant. Ascendancy trilogy, uh, and it focuses on Thrawn's early life and origins. Yeah, so, so that's awesome. yeah, like you said, ushering in a, a new generation of Thrawn lovers. Love it, love it. I so think I, have a, I, think I got a list. bumper sticker that says that Thrawn lover. <laughs> number number six on the punch list is PlayStation Five reveal event is scheduled for June eleventh. What's the day, Abram? Mm, today's Wednesday, and I think it's June 10th, which Tomorrow, means, if my math is the correct... The PlayStation 5 reveal event is scheduled, so... This, this, this is, is cool. good. This is great. I am I'm PlayStation probably foremost. Yeah. Uh, you know, grew up on Nintendo stuff, and then I played Xbox, and now I'm on PlayStation. I think all consoles are great, but this is the new, you know, PS5 to see the new... Uh, next generation console see what it, all the buzz is going to be about i mean people are speculating like what what games are going to be on you know what games are going to be on release like can i play my ps4 games 
can I, can I play my PS1 games? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, exci- it's exciting to always to see the, like, you know, the unveiling of the, the new shiny thing. Well, and I'm sure nerds will universally be happy. There won't be any complaints on Twitter, I'm sure. We'll, oh, we'll no, be no, fine. no. It's fine. No. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully there'll be some, there'll be some happy nerds out there, but I'm, I'm stoked about it. And even though I'm, I'm behind the, uh, I, my favorite console is the original NES in Zelda one. So I'll go to my grave saying that, but I am totally stoked. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a, that's a classic yeah. and a good one. Yeah. I might just make an excuse like, ah, oh, honey, the kids really need this. Can it play? Can the PS5 play my Zelda one? <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. That's tomorrow. So, yeah, so get ready. Get ready for that. Played, if you're watching it in the past, I don't know how you're doing that, but tomorrow. <laughs> so punch list number five is Marvel's free comic book day titles coming in July, which is weird because free comic book day is always the first Saturday in May, except except 2020 is crazy. Right. And uh, I think last time we, last time I was on two weeks ago, I think we talked about uh, RPG Day, free RPG Day. Um, yeah. So free yeah. comic book day is the same thing for comic lovers. It's about it's for comic lovers and hoping to get some new new readers of comic books. And uh, so we got some. What well, we got? X Men, uh, Prelude to X, X of Swords crossover, Spider Man. Yeah. So I mean, it's characters that even if you don't read comics right now. You oh, know them already, so yeah. You know, heard of Spider Man? Yeah, yeah, I think I think you may have heard of uh, Spider Man just around the neighborhood, maybe. Yep, um, yep. So, uh, so my local shop here is called The Source Comics and Games here in Minneapolis. It's awesome. Um, I always go with my daughters and nephews to Free Comic Book Day. They love it, and they get a nice little grab bag. So, um, so on one hand, like honestly, I just wish like we could unplug the year 2020, just unplug it and just do a hard reboot, you know? Right. Um, but since we can't do that, I'm glad that some of these things that have been postponed are getting rescheduled, even though if it, you know, it'll probably be a little weird because there'll be a lot of shops will still be, um, my shop was packed. Oh, I'm sure. Issues. There's literally no way they'll be able to do that. I'm sure there'll be some sort of line in the parking lot. Um, maybe, maybe they'll pile them swords is going to be awesome i'm i'll take anything hickman x-men um that was going to be launching around this time a lot of those the releases are delayed so there'll be a preview i think x of swords is coming in september now don't quote me on that don't quote me on anything yeah, we're, ever. we're not sure you can go check one of the past punch lists we talked about uh all yep. the up, upcoming stuff yep that's awesome dude like i'm yeah. excited free comic yeah. days back on so my nephews and uh, we'll be stoked. So number four on the punch list, Fantasy Flight's Cosmic Encounter gets a 1v1 dual title. Have you played Cosmic Encounter? I haven't. Same. So we are, yeah. we are primed to so talk So what are we going to talk about? Um, well, Make I was, up? I, I'm going to talk about it from uh, the perspective of, <laughs> you know, whenever, a, whenever a, a big game gets like a dual, like a, a 2v2 or very mm-hmm. small scale, it's I, I love I love the dual versions of games. Seven Wonders, Seven Wonders Duel. Seven Wonders Duel is like it's one of my favorites. I absolutely love it. Um, and so, you know, assuming you know, people like Cosmic Encounter, bringing it down and like saying, "All right, we have all these things going on in Cosmic Encounter. What can we boil that down to to make yep. that same experience, but just tighter, just tighter for two people?" Yep. And I love I love that because it a lot of times it you're improving on the original by removing some stuff to say what makes this game fun and let's just exponentially multiply that fun. Yeah. Yeah. Can I play devil's advocates here? Well, I guess since we're talking Marvel Mephisto's advocate here, um, (laughs) which is, yeah, I haven't played cosmic encounter, but isn't there bluffing or negotiation or isn't that a huge, like from what I understand with that game, there's either bluffing or negotiation, which as a one v one game, you I'm can't. like, good you, luck. You can't do it. You can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that so I'm sure yeah. it'll be a whole whole new game, which actually I think is even more exciting mm-hmm. because you, from what I understand, the settings kind of need you know aliens and all sorts of fun stuff. So anyway, yeah, I was looking at I was looking at the cards and um, 
the the link to the actual news on the punch list and it, it does like it's got that has a very like starfinder feel like that the art just reminds me of oh, starfinder a lot. yeah um yeah with the, with the different like, aliens hey, and stuff hey, so let's uh let's have an otter otter man let's have a let's go buck wild yeah let's do it so yeah. no that's so that's exciting um that's next week yeah june 19th next week that comes yep. out yep that's cool all right, number three on the punch list. You're going to see how much restraint I can use. Ooh, I have been, I've been waiting be all day. Nine-hour discussion, but let's that's, jump right that's, in. That's how we, that's um, how we get this video monetized. <laughs> Talk about DC. So DC Comics, they're ditching Diamond Distributors. So to anyone else who isn't a like a deep deep nerd, you're like, who cares? So here's a little bit of backstory. So um comic books in the late you know all through the history up to the se- late 70s were sold on newsstands right um to the new york times Spider-Man that's Lines. right and in and in drug stores but guess what there's like a million floppy little comic book titles and drug stores got tired of always trying to find shelf space and keep up with them so they put them on something called spinner racks so the nerds like me, they got their first comic after a spinner rack so that they could kind of get them out of the way and put them on that spinner rack. Um, eventually, the spinner racks got in the way. And um, spinner racks, they got in the, they get spinner racks in the way of spinner racks. Right. And so they're like, gosh, what if there was a read? What if there were specialty stores just for nerds like us, right? Um, and then some comic books like Dazzler, the comic book character Dazzler, was some of the first ones that would go like, and I think there were some other, like maybe Moon Knight. Some of those old comics were started specialty stores. And so in order who to get those comics into a shop, a distributor, there were several of them, but then one distributor kind of ruled them all. And in the and darkness ended up, found them. Yep. And ended up kind of being the main distributor diamond. Um, and so, Diamond, they essentially bought up all the other distributors. Mm-hmm. It was capitalism, right? They they won, <laughs> you know. Like they monopolized the, the supply chain of comic books, that niche yeah. market. Yeah, and then there were some other things like in the '90s, Marvel Comics started their own distributor. It was called Heroes World. Don't quote me on that either. But anyway, Marvel <laughs> in the '90s started their own distributor. Marvel also went bankrupt in the 90s. So we all know how a lot of those things went. And so for decades, Diamond Distributors has been kind of the, the bedrock of, the, of comic book shops. Um, I don't think it's dramatic to say that without Diamond Distributors, a lot of comic book shops as we know it would not exist. Because they were the ones that, because it's a funky little business for nerds like us and oh, yeah. um, go in these shops. Um, but they had a monopoly, right? And so DC Comics in particular didn't like that monopoly. And they felt like Diamond needed a kick in the pants, right? Because they're not innovating. They're not they're, they're stagnant enough or whatever. Yeah. Um, and so during the timing of COVID, uh, Diamond kind of stopped their orders. They didn't deliver for seven weeks. They, they kind of made payment plans just to get the money out. Um, you know, it was a whole mess for a whole lot of industries, the comic book industry. Uh, and when we say comic book industry, we don't mean uh, graphic novels. We mean the floppies, you know, the mm-hmm. little periodicals. Um, they're the monopoly there. So long story short, DC Comics uh, found two online sellers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So the main competitors of comic shops um, – and these two online sellers started new companies, new distributors to just do DC Comics, which will be delivered on Tuesday instead of Wednesday. Um, and now DC Comics um, is ditching Diamond, and they're going with these other two. So for a small little comic shop owner, like instead of making one order, they're now making uh, multiple orders. Mm-hmm. And some of those orders for the DC Comics are with their online competitors and it's just a whole bunch of funkiness and uh yeah it's i don't know man it's you know it, it's rough because i mean even i mean we've we've lauded like marvel unlimited and 
all these, you know, online ways to read comics, but there's, I mean, there's, there's something tangible about comic books to, you know, flip through and, you know, get, get your, your pull list and stuff like that. So, I mean, this is a, this is big, like, this is industry shaking. This is, it is. this is something that is, uh, it, it feels like a harbinger in a, in a not so great way. Um, yeah. so we'll kind of, we'll kind of see what happens. I mean, um, yeah, I don't, that's all I got on this. Well, so if I'm being positive, I'm like, well, diamond gets a kick in the pants. They're going to innovate. Right. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, they, they, yeah. If when, if, when I'm, if, when I'm being, if I'm being a pessimist, I'm thinking about everything else. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, which is, which is all other, all other realities. So, um, so it's going to be weird. Uh, I love my comic shop. I think in particular in, in COVID, it's like, man, I don't miss going. I don't, I haven't missed going anywhere except, my, except my shop. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's kind of for us nerds. That's kind of our, that's kind of our, our third place. It's, um, like, a, it's like a little retreat. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes. DC, of course, is number two. Uh, Marvel typically has forty five percent ish. DC like twenty five to thirty percent. Image like seven five to ten, and then every everyone else Everybody like two else. to three. Yeah, so we'll we'll it's uh it's a big shake up in in your comic shop. Mm-hmm. All right, enough All right. about that. <laughs> that was a good history lesson, though. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, number two, WizKids unveils 2D minis for D and D. Huge, huge, yeah. because some of my favorite things, I, you know, we, Paizo isn't even in this thing, but we've talked about this now, the th- maybe the second or third time we're mentioning Paizo. Paizo's uh, pawns, the pawn collections for the best years are, I mean, it's like I don't know how much they are anymore, but you get gobs and gobs of these these pawns and it's like you know they're easy to store you can put them in a binder instead of you know having all these minis for everything and saving those minis for those big those big fights the big dragons and stuff you know giants things like that um mm-hmm. so for whiz kids to do you know if D is moving now towards these uh you know 15 dollar sets of these regular 2d minis i mean that's i mean that's a it's a lucrative it's a lucrative market like players get the most bang for their buck by getting a bunch of monsters and creatures and NPCs for 15 bucks. So that's, it's, it's huge. Great deal. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, a gazillion words we've written on nerds on earth about whiz kids minis and how many, Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> on, on our YouTube channel. Just watch um, clave unbox blister unboxing. after blister of whiz kids minis. Blister after blister of whiz kids minis. Um, so to do 2D, which is interesting because they do license Paizo mm-hmm. uh, to do 3D minis. Uh, and so Paizo is known for doing the pawns. So there's a little bit of competition there. Um, yeah, I mean, so they're going into a new market. I think minis in general, miniatures are just selling miniatures and dice, oh, right? Dice, you dice can't get their sure. D&D books because they release two books a year, right? Yeah. But, and and the, most of those are only for for DMs. So what do players get? Just a bunch of dice. Just a bunch of dice. Yeah, you got to sell those auxiliary products. Um, so now they're going 2D, which is interesting because they also have their 4D sets, right? Which mm-hmm. are like themed. <laughs> so anyway, just a lot of minis. A lot of um, minis. I mean, it is the it is a golden age of. Uh of tabletop games. I mean, you can, totally. with, and, and with 3d printers on the rise, I mean, it's yeah. like, I can't 3d print everything. I need, I need, I need some 2d pawns. That's right. That's right. Which reminds me, we've got to wrap this up because I need to go paint some minis before they melt in your attic. <laughs> <laughs> so number one on the punch list is terraforming Mars is getting a big box. Abram, just go to town on this news, uh, buddy. Terraforming town. Mars. Maybe might be, my number one game that I've ever played. Uh, uh, and I know a lot of people share that same thing. It's Engine Builder. 
Uh, but to get a big box, and it's not, I mean, the box, I love, I love boxes. Scythe legendary well, box. Be honest about the component quality of Terraforming Mars, Abram. Like, just be honest. Uh, it's, I would say subpar would be putting it generously. <laughs> uh, the card, a lot of people have qualms with the art on the cards, and yeah. I think that's warranted. It's sort of like uh, Getty Images stock photos all the way through. Yeah. Um, but it's a great game. It's, but the it's game a great good. The production yeah. quality is abysmal. Right. So it's like if you can get over that, just like blindfold yourself. Except you, you know, you have to peek every now and down again because you gotta actually look at the cards. Um, so big box. I love the big box. Um, you know, at this point, Terraforming Mars has I think four or five expansions now. So to get everything that fits in one spot, um, that's always a huge plus for the shelf. Um, but not only that. 3D terrain tiles, which yep. a lot of people have been, you know, pimping out their their copy of it. There's yep. a lot of like, you know, 3D printed files out there, so you can make all these tiles and stuff. But uh, to get some official uh, 3D tiles for the cities and forests and the oceans and all those special tiles, uh, this is like the. It feels like a capstone. It feels like a yeah. bow being wrapped on the Terraforming Mars uh, franchise, which. Maybe it is. I haven't heard any news of any more expansions, but uh, you f you feel like they want to, you know, keep expanding as much as they can. So maybe that big box has got a little empty space for a little something more. Yeah, yeah. In lieu of new expansions, this kind of this is kind of the version of dice, right? You got to sell those auxiliary products, but yes. this is a game that needs it. And us nerds, we're weird. Like I like to store my games as much as I like to play my games. You know, mm -hmm. like I like to trick out and upgrade and put stuff. To I, we us nerds love that stuff so i think that's that's fun it's getting the big box it's a good game um the production quality has always been a little a little lower so to get something to store and to kind of upgrade some components is fun totally yep so that's going to kickstarter i don't i can't remember when pretty soon i think don't quote us on anything yeah <laughs> we're, we're not what you think we're experts <laughs> what we're not quotable all right, Abram, do you have a punch list in front of you? Do you want to run them down, or do you want me to run them down? Oh, I got, I got them here. So, punch right, list, run, run, run them quick. Seven, Star Wars, first book in the new Thrawn Ascendancy Trilogy is releasing a month early. Yep. Uh, number six, the PS5 PlayStation reveal event is scheduled for tomorrow, tomorrow. June 11th. Uh, number five was Marvel's free comic book day titles coming in July, including X-Men, X of Swords, Spider-Man. So fun pick those, stuff. Pick those up. Number four, Fantasy Flight's Cosmic Encounter gets a 1v1 dual title for all of your two-player board game needs. Yep. Number three, I don't think we talked about it that much, but DCU ditched Diamond Distributors. Uh, I don't, we just kind of glossed over that one. Yeah. It's well, not big news. It's not, it's not news. And number two, WizKids availing 2D minis for D&D, &D, some new pawns for your tables. Flat. And number one, Terraforming Mars is getting a big box with new 3D printed tiles. Big, well, I don't know if they're 3D box. printed. They're just 3D. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's your None punch list. None of that 2D WizKids stuff for Terraforming Mars anymore. Oh, can, you imagine? can you imagine? <laughs> I'm writing uh, Jacob Frixelius. I'm writing him right now. Right now. Stronghold Games, right, get on it. Well, thanks for talking talking about nerdy news with me. Yeah, thanks, Clay. It's, it's a blast as always. You All can, right, uh, Matt. Catch, make sure people catch us over at nerdsonearth.com, the website every Wednesday for the punch list, and we will go live in the afternoon to talk about it. Talk about the news every Wednesday. That's it. All right, man. Later on. Thanks. Take care. Later, nerds.